Hey everyone. Today is a lovely rainy. Um, sorry, I had to get us all situated. I know. Sorry. I thought I had it, but then Heather moved. <laughs> Anyways, today is a lovely rainy day here in Lawrence, wouldn't you say? So cheery out there. Um, and that goes along with our cheery topic today of yeah. sodium and blood pressure. Um, which I think is a really important topic because so many people have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. yes. So I think this is a good topic to talk about. Um, and it's near and dear to my heart, actually, because I have so many people in my family and friends that have high blood pressure. This is important. Mm -hmm. My patients, they have high blood pressure. This is all important. You probably have people, too. Yeah. So anyways, that's what we're talking about today is sodium. It's like the last one of our electrolytes that we're talking about, right? Yes. And um, then we'll move on to some new kind of topic. Yes. I actually have an idea for a topic I forgot to mention. Oh, I did too. Actually. Yeah. So I hope it's not the same one. <laughs> <laughs> we gained so we have two new ideas, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyways, for all of you lovely people that um, aren't sure of who we are, I am Dr. Smith, and I am from Accomplished Health and Wellness here in lovely, rainy Lawrence, Kansas. And this is Heather Fiore, and she's from Free State Nutrition, also here in lovely Rainy Lawrence, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And um, and so today, I just kind of wanted to touch on like the highest risk people for um, health problems related to salt. So mm -hmm. related to salt. So those are going to be anyone over the age of fifty. I know, right? Yikes! Like there's another milestone. That's quite age. a blanket statement there. Yep. Um, also, anyone, obviously, with slightly elevated or elevated blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Duh. Sure. Um, people with diabetes. Oh, sorry. Be the bearer of bad news. Mm. And African Americans. Right. I know. So, here we are. Now we know. Um, so, I thought it would be really important to talk about actually what happens when we take in salt. Okay. Okay. So, um, we love to talk science. I know some people like it and some people don't, but that's why we do this for those people that like it and the ones that don't, you can skip for it. <laughs> so anyways, um, okay. So when you take in a high salt load, your kidneys actually will have trouble keeping up with the salt in your system because they can only do so much. And what happens in everything, as you know, like you learned this in high school, um, the rate limiting, the slowest step is your rate limiting step, right? So the kidneys are going to get backed up with the sodium. Yeah. And so the salt will actually build up in your bloodstream. And what happens when you build up salt is that water always follows the sodium, okay? Right. Um, it's just like anything that's osmosis, water follows salt. Um, and so because that water follows the sodium and the sodium is in your bloodstream, your blood volume is going to increase because the, the fluid is going to now go into your bloodstream. It also goes around the cells um, everywhere because the salt is um, trying to be pushed to all these places and it can only be pushed um, so much, right? So um, your, as your blood volume goes up, um, your heart has to work harder to work with all of this extra blood volume. It has to pump harder. There's more fluid to move um, to get it everywhere. And so your blood pressure goes up because mm -hmm. now you have more volume in your blood vessels, right? right? And your heart is working harder. So over time, this extra work and the extra pressure will stiffen your blood vessels and they become mm -hmm. less compliant. That's what we call, um, call that, is less compliant. And then what happens? Your blood pressure goes up. You get an increased risk of a heart attack because your heart is working harder right, right now. You have an increased risk of stroke. You also have all this um, salt there and all this extra fluid, and so you can go into what's called heart failure, and that's where mm -hmm. your heart just cannot pump the amount of volume that's coming in, and it starts to back up places, into your legs, into your lungs, anywhere it can back up. And that's when you get swelling in your extremities. So the one big thing is elevated. So elevated salt is going to lead to elevated blood pressure. And that is directly linked to cardiovascular disease. Increased blood pressure, increased salt, leading cause of cardiovascular disease. Isn't that sad? Yeah. It's also um, causes two-thirds of all um, strokes. Two-thirds, that's a lot. Um, and half of all heart disease, not just heart attack, but heart disease. Wow. 
That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, here I am harping on salt and blood pressure, but we do need salt. Mm -hmm. So salt is everywhere in your body, right? You have um, my little person coming out and her name is Emily and she has all these sodium potassium pumps that are working right now so that she can show me something. This is her. Say hi. Hi. Okay. So now you can show it to me Mommy. after. Mommy, this is a doll I saw um, from the movie. Oh, I like it. Okay, go it's back there. It's a doll I saw, saw from the movie. It's so weird that there's a doll in two movies. Crazy. Okay, close that door. We saw the doll in the movie. Now we all know. Yeah. And in order to, for her to move in here and all of her brain and all of her nerves and everything to function to tell me that and to show me with her little finger, she needed sodium potassium pumps. So nice. see, nice we segue. need them everywhere. Sodium <laughs> is important. But how much do we really need? How much do we need? Well, I don't know if that's clear, actually. It's not. Right? We don't know how much we need. No. We but there is a recommendation yeah. of like 2,300 milligrams yeah. from your diet, which is about how much you would get in a teaspoon of salt. We should have brought them. Yeah, that'd be a nice visual. A teaspoon. You know what a teaspoon looks a like. A teaspoon. Right? That's like as much as you know. Right. I probably put like a fourth of a teaspoon in the Mexican food that I make. You know. Could be. It could That's be. like. So if you like put a teaspoon of salt in your salt shaker and you, that was all you used all day, like you think, oh, I'm doing great. Except that there's salt like already in most of your food. Right. Sorry to tell you. It's right. not just what you put. Right. But if you're cooking, just as a little side note here, if you're cooking, your best chance to like taste salty without going overboard is to put it on at the end. Like that's what we do. Yeah, like don't put a bunch of salt in the pasta water or like while the stuff is cooking. Yeah. Just add it on top at the end, a tiny little bit, and then you'll taste that saltiness without it being huge amounts. Okay. Sign it. I do put some salt in the water though to get it to boil a little bit quicker. I should just be a little bit more patient. I believe you. You should be more patient. Yes. Okay. Yes. There you have it, guys. Because what happens really, right? Like the salt lowers the boiling point, right? So it boils faster, but then doesn't it take longer to cook? Mm. Well, because it's because it's less hot. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I My don't mom know. puts a little salt in the water too. I I, I don't know. So. You know, I could just be more patient. I could start my pasta earlier. Right. There you go. There's a quick fix. And less salt. Ta -da. I don't put a lot in there, but. Right. And most so, of it probably gets rinsed off. Anyway. Even so, it's like, done. I don't need it. it. Up. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, we, we fixed one, one thing. Problem solved. Yeah. Yeah. So um, 2,300 milligrams is not a lot. Actually, um, when I was doing like hospital work and everything, we would put everyone on a 2,000 milligram salt diet. <laughs> Just across the board. Yeah, if you got if you had heart failure, it was even less. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good question, though, because a lot of times, um, um, see, the, the I mean, it does flavor the, the um, it does. I agree. It flavors the mm. pasta a little bit. But again, you could do it at the end. You could get used to it, right? Yeah. Right. Or yeah. You, you know, that's the, the other thing is like with anything, you have to almost reset everything, all of your taste buds. Right. So that and that takes a while mm -hmm. to do. It does. it does. But then all of a sudden, things become salty. Yes, it's true. Like you really can adjust your taste buds to less salt, and then you get really sensitive to it yeah. when it when something is really salty. Yeah. Yeah. Or better yet, is like raise your kids, your babies to not eat salt because it's not a natural mm -hmm. um, preference. It's right. learned, right? right? So we teach our kids to like salt because we give it to them. And if you don't um, give them salt. If you hide the salt shaker. If you put, you know, flavor things with other seasoning, then they won't miss it. And of course I'm back right now. To, uh, of course she's back right now so that I can open no. her. <laughs> It's just any chance to get in front of the camera. Yeah. See, once her um, layer bar opened, I don't think. Hey, right, stop. Easy, easy. I don't think there's any salt in the layer bar. Mm -hmm. 
I bet there is. Do you think? Yeah. Maybe a little. Just Let's a see. little bit. I still have some popcorn in my mouth. Yeah. All right. Mommy. 65 milligrams. Mommy. That's not a ton. Mommy. Oh, that's a, we don't popcorn. need to see your popcorn. Go. I ate all of it. Okay, go. Bye-bye. All right. Don't you love spring break? Spring break I is just... the best. I'm telling you. Right. <laughs> um, Do you know that they haven't, like, my kids haven't been in school but one full mm, week, like, the entire, since January. It's ridiculousness, entirely. Makes me want to cry. Mm -hmm. I was losing my yeah. mind. Yeah, okay. so we were gone last week, and we're, my kids were all distraught about missing a whole week, and I was like, you know, I bet there'll be a snow day. Sure enough, there's a snow day, so <laughs> right. they missed one less day of school. See? Okay, so where were we? Um, I don't even know. 2,300, 2,000. Okay. So um, our recommended is 2,300. Right. And sometimes we recommend less than that, mm -hmm. but the question is whether that even um, helps. Helps or not. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing to note, like I was talking about sodium potassium pumps. Um, and mm -hmm. what are those? Those help to move things in and out of your cell. They also help to create the energy in your ATP production because they're used in that too. And um, and so an ATP is what we talk about as energy in the body. Mm -hmm. Even though you guys know like calories and all of that, and we are we really say you're burning ATP because that's your fuel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyways, okay, so. Sodium and potassium actually move in opposite directions mm -hmm. in all of our pumps, mostly all of them. You know, that whole thing, you're never supposed to say all. That's true. Right. Um, but mostly they move in opposite directions. So that's kind of an interesting thing because they have opposite effects cardiovascular wise, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of sure. people are like, should we do a salt substitute and substitute potassium mm -hmm. for our sodium? I don't know. What do you think? I think there are some cases where that helps, right? Mm -hmm. I've heard it tastes a little bit metallic. I have heard that as well. Yeah. But I think there are other ways to, um, you know, to get flavor. Right. It doesn't have to be like a salty thing. It can just right. be like other herbs and spices Spice. and yeah. I do that actually. Um, mm -hmm. So yesterday before we did this, yes, last night I was making some taco stuff, meat, taco meat. Mm -hmm. And I went to grab the pepper because I was like, oh, I'm going to, I always put pepper in it anyway. But then I was like, if I can make it a little spicier, then I don't need to have the salt as mm -hmm. much, right? Okay. I grabbed the salt shaker. <laughs> <laughs> that did not work. It's so backward. Then I was like, oh my God, oh, that didn't work for me. Well, good thing I didn't sprinkle too much on there because it really wasn't that salty. So I just did extra pepper. It worked. <laughs> my plan worked. Although I tried to foil myself. Anyways, um, so, oh, where can we get that, um, like, where do we get salt from our foods and stuff? Where should well, we be watching? I mean, it is in almost right. everything. Even right? your Lara bar. I guys. know. Anything, <laughs> like, packaged or processed, right, they add salt for flavor, but also to preserve food. Mm. Um, so, so anything that's packaged, for sure. Or processed. Um, anything at a restaurant. Oh, gosh. Fast food. That's why after you eat, you drink mm -hmm. lots of water. Mm -hmm. You're so thirsty. That's right. the salt. Yeah. 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 And why your, you know, fingers get swollen. Swollen. Yeah. Not like, um, you know, in congestive heart failure, you just ate a lot of salt. Yeah. That's all that happened. Um, so, you know, it's... Um, like salted meats, right? Any like deli meats or like cured meats, like ham, any of that kind of stuff. Um, sausage, obviously, and bacon. Those are, you know, I would think that would be obvious. Those are going right. to be major sources. Especially when it says low sodium. Guess what? The normal one, salted. Yeah, that is for sure. So then also like just in regular food or like frozen foods too. Like, and I don't mean just like frozen vegetables, but frozen entrees like oh, yeah. um you know it could be pizza or it could be like a you know a mixed dish um those are gonna have a lot of salt in them and then of course like canned stuff like sure. uh, canned soup or chili or you know uh, chef boyardee oh gosh yeah yeah 
a lot of salt going on there. And then in regular foods, um, you know, we, we talk about like eating more like fresh foods, but um, like even bread and cheese, which are like really in the grand scheme of things, minimally processed, they also have like a decent cheese. amount of salt. Don't pick on the cheese. I know. I thought we were needing that for calcium. The cheese, right, yeah. exactly. I mean, so it's risks and benefits here, right? Yeah, there you go. Um, you know, get your get your sodium and your saturated fat from cheese because it's delicious and you're going to get calcium too. That's all yeah. I Well, and also, um, isn't there like, isn't there sodium? Well, I guess um, there's some sodium in your fruits and vegetables, mm. but it's a lower amount because it's usually more potassium. Yeah, I would say it's pretty, pretty right? minimal. Yeah, so... Um, mm -hmm. Usually that, like, don't put salt on your tomato. People do that, you know. I know. Put balsamic vinegar on it. Yeah. Is that salty? I don't know. It tastes kind of twangy. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. Mm -mm. So then there. You can, there's this really good thing where you both. take. Oh. <laughs> salt and so, um, there's this really good thing where you can take cherry tomatoes and mozzarella and, like, you alternate them on, like, a skewer. And then you mm. pour um, balsamic vinegar over it. Like That's a pretty good. Crazy salad on a stick. Yeah, it That's is. That is. That's pretty good. Delicious. Um. So, anyways, I thought we would just kind of go over some studies um oh, that have been done over the past couple of um you know decades, mm -hmm. and just look at what they found. Um. So there, the first study I wanted to talk about was called InterSalt, and it was done in the eighties. And it measured the salt, the sodium excretion over a 24-hour period among um, over 10,000 people, and it was in 32 different countries. We tried to hit everyone. Okay. That's right. And what they found was that the range it ranged from 200 milligrams all the way up to 10,300 milligrams. Where do you think that was? I'll give you three guesses, and the first <laughs> two don't count. <laughs> and the what they found was that the average was about 4,000 milligrams excreted daily. Shoot. The other things that they found was that the more sodium you consumed, the higher your blood pressure, and the greater your increase in blood pressure per age as you grew. Mm. The other thing was that as um, the lower sodium consumption, lower your blood pressure was, and there was no upward trend of your blood pressure with age. So what they found, like that's important because that means that there isn't a normal upward trend of your blood pressure as you age. So you can't blame getting old. Right. That's what that means. So this is really actually sodium driven. Then there were two other trials. It was called the Trials of Hypertension, and there were two studies done. And this was in the 80s and the 90s. And they tested the impact of lifestyle change on blood pressure, including weight loss, stress management, nutritional supplement, and consuming less sodium. And we might get another visitor. <laughs> my eye twitching. Um, right here. Thank you. Are you done with it? Okay, they saw you. <laughs> they have a nice day. Go. Okay. They Hello, you. boo boo. Okay, go. <laughs> She's so silly. That one is my middle child. My oldest one is hiding back there somewhere, but she tries to sometimes get on here too. Okay, so um, in each study, they sh they found a small decrease in blood pressure that was seen with sodium decrease over the ages of, or, sorry, over the time period of 18 to 36 months. Okay. But it's only small. But what they did was years later, after the study was done, mm -hmm. they actually followed up with participants. Yeah. And um, what they found was that the people that stayed with low sodium after 10 to 15 years, um, they had 25% less um, they were 25% less likely to have a heart attack, a stroke, or need a bypass or stent. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that says that, you know, if you lower your sodium now, it may not show a lot right now, but it, the benefits are big down the road. Wow. That's good. 
What they also found was that increasing potassium in your diet decreased your chance of developing cardiovascular trouble. So uh, any like anything heart related, yeah, not just heart attack and stroke, but other things. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so what you want to do is increase your potassium and lower your sodium in your diet, and that may be the best thing for lowering your blood pressure and decreasing your risk of cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you can do that with fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And then the last one was surprising, the DASH diet, the DASH one. So the DASH is the dietary approach to stop hypertension, and that started in 1994. It's been that long, isn't yeah, it? isn't that that's like a long time ago now? I know. Um, and so what they did was after eight weeks, um, they had people on um, Dash, and then a diet rich in fruits and vegetables. Um, and what they found was that the people that were on the Dash diet and just the diet that was high in fruits and vegetables, they had a decrease in both their um, systolic and diastolic blood pressures, um, but the Dash diet was better at it. Mm -hmm. um, a second study actually done later further, uh, so this was like a part of the DASH diet and that's like with the different um, levels, mm -hmm. was that if they further decreased the sodium content in the DASH diet, it showed even better results. Wow. Right. So interesting because like aren't there some people who are like sensitive to salt and other people who aren't and we don't know who well, they are sure. but some people aren't sensitive to salt. Some people aren't but people. I think that um, I think it's more of an overtime thing. I think everyone is sensitive over time. Got it. You know so like you you could probably say that not not as sensitive to salt change um, would you would see that in that 18 to 36 month study where there wasn't right. a lot of decrease in blood pressure but then still over over time over time it yes, did too. impact you it did impact them pretty great sense. yeah mm -hmm. can't get around it people we're eating too much salt oh, oh gosh we really and are we need to chill salt and sugar i think those are two I know. salt just seems a lot more like concrete you yeah. know yeah so um, how can we decrease it easily, do you think? Well, I don't know about easily, frankly, because cause it isn't so many things. Yeah. And and the foods that we choose, we choose for lots of reasons, not just because they're salty and delicious, but because they're convenient, Yeah. right? I mean, we choose things that come in packages because we don't always have time to prepare everything from scratch. Yeah, because I mean, we're all working moms. Yeah. Who has time for and dads? I didn't want to leave out the dads. But who has time for that? Yeah. But I mean, what does society expect from us? Right. We're not like spending all day cooking and cleaning, like I don't know who did that, how many generations ago at this point. Same right. Thing. So uh so it's it's challenging. But the more you can eat more uh fresh foods and less processed, the better off you're gonna be. Okay. If you can um you know, when you're out at a restaurant, um, you know, eating a reasonable portion, like similar to what you would eat at home. I try to cut in half, mm -hmm. cut my plate in half. And yeah, and just like listen to your body because a lot yeah. of times we go out and we think like it's a special occasion even when it's not. Like yeah. some people go out a few times a week. That's not special, people. Mm -hmm. That's just eating food. So, right. you know, so don't treat it like a special thing. <laughs> when you're just eating food because right. you need to eat and don't feel like cooking or don't have time. Right. So take some of it home or, you know, be a little more thoughtful about what you choose. Like, can you get less processed stuff even when you're out? You know, like maybe it's not like having a whole bunch of sauce on it because sauces usually are salty um, or it's not fried. I mean, fried stuff tends to be salty. You know, French mm -hmm. fries that are not salty, don't taste very good. I don't know if you noticed. So, um, you know, just That's being... why you put ketchup on it. But then there's salt in the ketchup. Also salty, I know. Or you put ranch on it. Guess what? They're salt. Salty. Can't get, out of, uh, get around it, really. Yeah. So, you know, just being more thoughtful about, like, your choices when you're out or going out less often or, you know, eating less when you're there, um, doing those kind of things. And yeah. then at home... Um, you know, choosing lower salt options, like if you eat deli meat, 
you know, can you do it less often or can you choose the lower sodium version? Mm -hmm. um, can you make your own soup or can you get low sodium soup in a can? And, and there are choices, right? And frozen mm -hmm. foods too, you can get decent choices in the frozen aisle as well. Um, like, I don't know, like healthy choice. We, we, got another we one? have another, we have another, <laughs> another visitor. Um, visitor. They're coming at us from all angles. You can come over and, oh, um, she didn't sneak on. We just heard her voice. Yeah. The little Ani. He's so not, cute. not one for the camera for mm -hmm. sure. Um, you know, so just choosing like within, within your, your, uh, categories, just choosing like a lower sodium option right. when you can or or making things fresh when you can. I was just thinking mm -hmm. that um, this is like so classic mom day. <laughs> <laughs> like 12, how many, interruptions. Yes, how many people have their kids at work today? You know a lot of you. Mm -hmm. So don't even try. Yeah. So um, anyways, uh, I did want you to say um, the DASH diet. What okay. were the sodium levels on the DASH diet? So 2,300 and then 1,500 was the lower. Was the lower one. Yeah. That would be hard. Really difficult. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so then just two last things, mm -hmm. some other things about sodium. Sodium, um, it may, the increase in sodium may actually be linked to stomach cancer. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then osteoporosis. So mm. the more sodium that you're excreting, the more calcium you're going to lose. And so lowering your sodium actually could allow you to hold on to more calcium and strengthen your bones. Wow. Too. So it's kind of like a couple of different things there. Yeah. We do reasons. have a cool um, little handout that we'll link on yeah. um, that Heather found mm -hmm. that um, just like shows some alternatives, right, to foods right. that you can pick. Right, how to, how to get your sodium level down by swapping yeah. things out. Yeah, I like the scrapple. Yeah. yeah. The ham, pock, and uh -huh. liver pudding, because yeah. we all eat that every day. Right. Um, so, you know, if you have high blood pressure and you're looking at trying to lower your sodium, um, one, the DASH diet, that's actually, again, one of the highest ranking healthy diets, mm -hmm. um, especially for people with high blood pressure. The other one would be um, my favorite, the Mediterranean diet. It does also lower your sodium too. Mm -hmm. So, and that that's basically because they're almost the same. Yeah, very, very similar for sure. Yeah, whole grain, it's what Heather always says. Fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, healthy fat, dairy fat stuff, yeah. and um, legumes. And legumes. But you got to rinse your legumes if you use can. Rinse your legumes if you can. Sometimes they don't have, like the ones that I buy, mm -hmm. they actually don't have salt in them. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. You can get some, but you have to get like the um, organic ones. Oh. Yeah, and, and they actually, um, I only get them when they're on sale, so. Otherwise, you can make your own beans. You can. And Easily. we do. It's quite, um, it's not once that you get into the habit of it, yeah. that's it all. Takes planning. Okay, so we beat salt to death, um, and hopefully we've helped somebody lower their blood pressure out there um, <laughs> in the future or start to do the work. Yes. And we will put this little handout on mm -hmm. our thing to on our Facebook pages just to help you even more. Yep. And so what are we gonna do next time? Well I we? uh it occurred to me that we should talk about reflux. I don't think oh, we've yeah. talked about reflux, we right? We should so talk about reflux. Yes. It's a great one. You I know what else you I like was it. thinking? What? Um to add to our list mm -hmm. was um you know what we should do is we should add a few vitamin ones, mm -hmm. the, the bigger ones. For sure. But um, energy, low energy in foods. Like how can you increase your energy with foods that you eat? Oh. What do you think? It might be a complex topic. I know. But um, that I thought would be everyone is always like, oh, I have no energy. Yes. And, for sure. And so it's all about what you put in. Um, you know, if you, I always say this, that if you put bad gasoline, if you put it, if you put diesel gas in your unleaded tank, your car's not going to run right. So if you put fast food and yucky foods into your system, your system isn't going to run right. It's, 
Mm -hmm. Simple fact. So reflux, should we do that next time? I think, I think so. that's a great topic. Cool. And lots of people have that. So tune in next time and we'll be talking about reflux. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please don't hesitate to let us know. And we'll put that paper on or that handout on a little bit later. And have a lovely day for the rest of this rainy day. I hope somebody has snow or not snow. Not snow. How <laughs> dare you? Sun. Damn it, say sun. <laughs> Sunny days somewhere. Send us sun. All right. Have a good day. Bye.